Welcome to Postcards to the Universe with Melissa Caprio. Do you believe in magic? What if you were told that all you had to do was get a little creative and work a magic spell to bring anything you can imagine into your life? Here on Postcards to the Universe, we will share manifesting, tips, postcards, creativity, abundance, and prosperity. Here is your host, Melissa Caprio. Hello and welcome to Postcards to the Universe with Melissa, creating the life you crave. How is everyone doing? I hope you guys are doing well. Things are getting better around here, although as you know, you listen to me every week in Florida, it's super hot right now. So God, whoever's dealing with the heat right now, God bless us because it's it's really hot. I'm super excited about my show today. I have a great guest, iconic actress and now author of Wake Me When You Leave, Elisa Donovan, who I'm going to bring out in just a moment. Each week, if you guys listen to me on a regular basis, or if you're new to my show, I share an affirmation that I'm focusing on for the week. And I tap into the energy of that information, I mean affirmation, and I keep repeating it to myself. It's power. I want it to become a new belief I incorporate into my life. So this week's um, affirmation is a magic, I call it a magic money message. It's an image of a manifest postcard that I photograph with an affirmation that I'm focusing on. I post them on Mondays and this week's is I am the making of a star. Funny how I have an actress on my show this week and I am a hundred percent honest that I didn't plan it that way. When I select a manifesting postcard to photograph, I just go with the one that jumps out at me at the time. It isn't planned that I will share it on a particular week like i won't i won't pick a postcard to co- to coincide with that coming week and it just so it happens over and over again that the affirmation and the postcard i focus on for the week somehow do coincide with each other and it's just it's not a coincidence so i love when that happens okay what does i am the making of a star mean you could take it literal and become a television or movie star like elisa my guest today and Or, and this is how I do it, I am the making of a star in my life. What do stars do? They shine. You can navigate your location by looking up and following the North Star. So taking that metaphor in your life, how are you navigating? Are you flailing around in your life or are you seeing the unique person you are and shining your light on something that only you have to offer? Are you shining in your own life? Actually, a lot of the time we are not, and we wonder why we are so messed up or unhappy. We look for ways to mask that unhappiness, and usually it's very unhealthy, the things we do to numb ourselves out, not to feel. So I ask you to think about your life and ask yourself, am I making myself the star of my life? And if the answer is yes, fantastic. Keep it up and see all the wonderful things you will manifest and the abundance that will be drawn to you. And if the answer is no, why not? If it's as an artist, are you creating? If it's as a parent, are you present with your children? If it's as a doctor, are you compassionate with your patients? If it's as a teacher, are you excited with your students about learning? The list is endless. It doesn't matter what you're doing. You can always be the star in your own life because truthfully, you and you alone are the protagonist in your own story. So if you play out your role this lifetime, you might as well make it as wonderful as possible And that starts with how you treat yourself. Make yourself a big, bright, shining star in your life and see how magnetic you become and how abundant your life can be. If you want to see these magic money message postcards with their affirmations, you can go to my website, Postcards to the Universe. I share them each week on all my social media platforms. And if you're interested in doing inner work exercises and reading people's incredible journeys of transformation, inspiration, and manifesting, please check out my book, Postcards to the Universe, Harness the Universe's Power and Manifest Your Dreams, which you can find at your favorite online bookstore or in a bookstore, actually. And you can find me across all the social media platforms, including YouTube. And make a manifesting part postcard and send it to me. When your manifestation becomes comes your reality, we can have you share your story with us if you want. Email me if you have any questions, and I will help you create a wonderful, powerful manifesting postcard. 
Okay, next week I have Reverend Maggie Oman Shannon, an ordained interfaith and unity minister, spiritual director, workshop and retreat facilitator, artist, and she's the author of nine books, including Having Hope, 365 Encouraging Poems, Prayers, and Meditations for Daily Inspiration. And we're going to share her work on cultivating hope in our lives. So please join me next week. All right, to get to my fabulous guest today. Elisa Donovan is part of iconic pulp culture. She began her film career originating the role of Amber in the iconic Paramount Pictures comedy Clueless. She followed that up with television series Beverly Hills 90210. She then went on to reprise her role on the TV series of Clueless, during which time she shot the Paramount and SNL films comedy A Night at the Roxbury. Elisa has had reoccurring roles on multiple other TV series and has starred in numerous telefilm, telefilms. Elisa's first book, Wake Me When You Leave, Love and Encouragement via Dreams from the Other Side, was released this past summer on June 8th, 2021. The book is her very personal memoir about losing her job, her relationship, and her father to cancer all over a very short period. Through her grief, she began to connect to her father to a series of visitations and dreams, helping her to heal and remedy her life. The film version of Wake Me When You Leave is currently in development. The film will mark Elisa's screenwriting and di directorial debuts. You can find Elisa's new book on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and local bookstores, and follow her on her social media accounts to see what she's doing. Welcome, Elisa. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much. I'm thrilled. <laughs> yeah, me too. Okay. So I know who you are, and it's so funny because I just happened to, you know, I've been home a lot more since this pandemic, right? So yeah. watched more TV <laughs> this past year and a half than I think I ever have uh -huh. in my life. You are <laughs> so not alone. Clu I don't think <laughs> Clueless was just on, and I knew you were already coming now. I'd known you were coming on the show. And so it was so fun to watch it, like, from a totally different perspective. I'm like, oh, that's so cool. She's going to be on my show next week. Right. It's just on. <laughs> such a I miss the 80s and the 90s I have to say I it was know. great well I was just in New York actually I uh, uh yesterday to open well I did a book signing there yesterday but on Monday night the Bryant Park summer film series came back mm -hmm. after an absence because of COVID and mm -hmm. they started the festival they opened it with um Clueless so they had mm -hmm. me come as a surprise guest to introduce the film and I just, it's so crazy to think that that is, you know, that it has just reached so many people and brought so many people so much joy for so many years. It's really yeah. special. You know, it's a really nice thing to be a part of. It is. It is. And you can, it's one of those movies that you can watch over and over again because it's so funny. You know, it's like so cute and so <laughs> funny. And, you know, it's just feel good when you watch it. But right, so right. I know who you are. Many people who are listening to my show definitely know who you are. But just share a little bit about your background for those who are hearing you from the first time. Uh, so I have been a television and film actress for over 25 years. And I grew up in New York went to college in New York City for acting and writing. And um, Clueless was really the first big project. Not really, it was the first major uh, film that I had ever done. And then, as you mentioned, I continued to do television and more film. And then I did the show Sabrina, The Teenage Witch for several years. And all along, I've always been a writer as well. Um, and then, all of these seemingly negative things happened at the same time, and that compelled me to write this book. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I mean, I really enjoyed the book, and I was telling Lisa before we came out, the way I have so many authors on my show that I really like to try to um, – I start the book the week of the show. I'm a fast reader too. And I'm a major reader. Like I love to read. So uh, mm -hmm. I usually like to start on Mondays. So that way, by the time Wednesday comes around and we're live, I have the book fresh in my mind. And yes, I, one of the questions I was, yeah. One of the questions I was going to ask you is, were you always writing? Was that something that you always did? Yes. So I had been, I started writing when I was a, a child. I remember writing stories in first grade. And I remember I always had one of those, the black and white marble notebooks. Do you remember mm -hmm. those? I don't know if they still have those. 
I, you know, I wanted school supplies before I went to school. You know, my older brother and sister were always, you know, not wanting to go to school. And I was always in the first day of school photos before I even was in kindergarten. Right. So right. I, and I remember I would take notes, like write stories uh, when we would be back on, you know, family vacations or we had a pool growing up in our backyard and one of the, the chores and family tasks that we had to complete every spring was to take the cover off of the pool. I know now I think they have automatic things that might do that. Yeah. They didn't have that in the, in the 80s. Yeah, 80s. I know what you're talking about because I you was born I mean? in New Jersey. So I know yes. that. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And okay. so we would like, the, there were the big bags of wa- filled with water, you know, like rubber bags filled with water that held the cover on the cement on the sides of the pool. So at any rate, it was this thing that we just dreaded, but my father made us do it. And I remember in particular, um, just writing notes, telling a story while this was happening and turning it into this, like, you know, a, 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 a creative story. And my dad was so furious with me, like, put the pencil down and just help us do what we're <laughs> supposed to do here. And I think that is very much kind of what I grew up doing. And there was a time when I thought, I always knew I wanted to be an actress from a very young age, but I also thought I might want to just go in the direction of writing. And mm-hmm. so it was always kind of a tandem thing for me. Yeah. Well, I mean, so your book came out. So let's then let's get into this book, which is, like I said, it's really good. So your dad passes away in 2003 and the Mm -hmm. book just came out in 2021. So um, share a little bit about, you know, your experience of like, well, first let's talk about you wanting to tell the story and, and, you know, why did did you start writing it right away or did you decide many years later, like, I I need to write this story? Right. So what, what happened uh, essentially over the course of a very short period of time, mm-hmm. I was doing the television show Sabrina and it was canceled and I did not get another job. Uh, the relationship I was in with the person I thought I was going to marry ended and my dad died of cancer. He was diagnosed and was very ill for four months and then passed away. So I was basically went from from having a life where I understood all of it, where I was going, who I was, I had a successful uh, personal life and professional life and healthy family to having none of those things. And I really was just, um, I mean, it sounds strange to say it now, but I really was so thrown by how thrown I was. I kind of Mm -hmm. couldn't understand why I was so devastated. And you know, I, so I, I, I started to write pretty early on, but in the beginning, um, I just couldn't write anything because I felt so, uh, right. just, yeah. just lost and, and devastated, you know? Um, so initially when I f- would start to write, I actually kept thinking about my mom first mm-hmm. because I thought they had been married for nearly 50 years. You know, she didn't know any other life except living with her parents and then living with my father. And they had a very conventional, traditional marriage where she was a stay-at-home mom. And I just thought, if I'm having such a hard time, how is she even functioning through all of this? And so I kind of first started to write through her eyes. And then it started to flow more into my own feelings and experiences that were just kind of these snippets. It certainly didn't start as a book. It just started as me needing to get through the muck of how I was feeling and just try to process it all. Yeah, well, it, it, when I was reading it, that, it sounds like your, sec- your security was sort of the mm-hmm. rug was ripped out from under you all at the same time. So, you mm-hmm. know, the security of a job, which is your financial means, a security yep. of a relationship is gone. And then your father, which represents mm-hmm. security from your childhood all at once. And when you get that hit like exactly that, right. it, yeah, when you yeah. get hit like that, it really kind of throws you for a loop. I went through um, 
you know, a three for a three for also, I left a job I loved, um, a house I loved and a relationship all within 30 days. So it, it's like a sucker. Oh, punch. wow. Yes. Really, yeah. Yeah. It, yes. it hurts. Yes. <laughs> and you're grieving and you, and mm -hmm. you said in the book, and I thought this was really, you, you described it really well. You went through a period where you sort of just kind of got quiet and you would stare mm -hmm. at things for a long time. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I was like, I remember being in that space myself, like mm -hmm. I wouldn't be doing anything and time was weird and I would just mm -hmm. go within and stare. And you, you really did describe that, that, that very well. Like I, I wouldn't know how to describe what that was, but I totally got it when I read it in your book. Oh, I'm so glad because that was one of those things that, you know, and those periods can go on for such a long mm -hmm. time and mm -hmm. it, you really lose sense, you lose time, so to speak. And it certainly, I think, is a sign of, of a part of depression, also mm -hmm. of, uh, of just real loneliness and having to, it's a part of the grief process, you know, it's almost a, uh, a disassociative period too mm -hmm. but it also is really going deeper as you say mm -hmm. and that is I think where real transformation and the beginning of healing begins is actually mm -hmm. allowing oneself to get to that place instead of trying to skirt around it you know which I think we spend a lot of time trying to avoid mm -hmm. discomfort mm -hmm. and avoid mm -hmm. bad feelings and um and sadness and all those things and you know, anyone that's come through something, I think, would say, would agree that there's no way around it. You just, you, you yeah. have to go through it. And, um, you know, that, that's a big part of the healing. For sure. Okay, I want to delve into the book about the visitations, but we're up at our first break. So let's take our break here. And then when we come back in two minutes, we're going to talk about your dad's visitation. See you. So cool. Love it. Great. Stay tuned. Conscious Media for Conscious Minds. Ohm Times. Host your show on IOM FM, the radio network of Ohm Times Media, one of the more recognized brand names in the conscious community, and is backed by the extensive marketing reach of Ohm Times. Hosting a show on IOM FM immediately connects you with our extensive, dedicated community. Hi. I'm Melissa Caprio from Postcards to the Universe, creating the life you crave. Do you believe in magic? What if I told you all you had to do was get a little creative and work a dream spell to bring anything you can imagine into your life? Well, guess what? I've got the spell for you. Postcards to the Universe, a global movement for manifestation, is a casting magical tool for you to use whenever you want. How does living in passion sound to you? Join me in my movement where you get to create in the magical playground. Let's think outside the box and do some playful conjuring. By casting out our desires with a manifesting postcard, we explore our hearts and allow the alchemy of our dreams to appear. And don't forget to tune in each week here on Ohm Times Radio with my show, Postcards to the Universe, Creating the Life You Crave at 4 p.m. Eastern Time. I share tips on creativity, abundance, and prosperity, and you will be introduced to the coolest guests, trailblazers, mystics, and creatives who enrich our lives. My name is Victor Furman. Some call me The Voice. I've always been fascinated with human nature, spirituality, science, and the crossroads at which they meet. Join me Wednesdays at 8 p.m. Eastern on Ohm Times Radio, and we'll explore these topics and so much more on Destination Unlimited. The rainbow is God's promise of hope for you and me. And though the clouds hang heavy and the sun we cannot see, we know above the dark clouds that fill the stormy sky, Hope's rainbow will come shining through when the clouds have drifted by. Teresa Caprio is the president and founder of Rainbow Guardian Inc., a nonprofit 501c3 serving the intellectually challenged slash developmentally disabled, including autism. 
Teresa started the foundation in 1995 so she could help make a better life for her intellectually challenged daughter. Her dream is that the Rainbow Guardian will provide the necessary tools and education to help the public understand the special needs population because it's often discarded in mainstream society. To find out more or make a donation in support, please go to www.rainbowguardian.org. Rainbow Guardian's special mission is to see these unique people live a happy, full life and have a future of liberty and equality. Welcome back. So if you're just joining me today, I have iconic actress and now author of Wake Me When You Leave, Elisa Donovan on. And Elisa, talking about your book, uh, Wake Me When You Leave, um, when did you really sit down and decided after your experiences, because you talk in depth about your experiences and your dreams and the, and the visitations mm -hmm. and the signs from your dad and everything, which I love. But when did you sit down and say, you know what, I really need to make this a book? So initially, I started to write it as I wanted it to be a book very early on. And I would say in about 2006 or seven, maybe, mm -hmm. seven. And I just had this, this intuition and this very strong feeling that I'm going to write a book. I This needs mm -hmm. to be a book. Now, that was not met with a lot of... <laughs> joy and acceptance from the people around me because I was an right. actress and, right. you know, I didn't have a literary agent. I didn't. Mm -hmm. And so, but I kept, I just said, this is what I want it to be. And people suggested that I write it as a performance, as a play, mm -hmm. as a movie. Mm -hmm. And so I didn't want to do that. And then I thought, well, I can write it as a book and I can do it as a one woman show and just read it. So I started to develop it as a one person show. Um, and through that writing process, you know, writing for stage is very different than, than writing a, a book and writing narrative. And, um, so there was a whole uh, shift in the writing that I had to do for that. Yeah. And I did it at the Geffen Theater in L.A. as a benefit for the Big Brothers Big Sisters Foundation, which is an organization that I was um, mm -hmm. on the associate board of at the time. So I did this play, and it was a version of the book, you know, much shorter and uh, only had a couple of dreams in it and really was more just the story of my dad's passing and what happened right after. And mm -hmm. people's responses were so just overwhelmingly positive and they were so moved and they felt like they just, that it was so raw, but they wanted to talk about it and it was funny. And I thought, this is how I want the rest of my creative life to be. I want to connect with people in this way. You know, I want the work to be this authentic I want it to have meaning. And in that, at that time, that really shifted how I went about everything. And it still took many years to actually make it a book. I, at one point, I had, you know, officially written a proposal and had maybe four or five chapters and had a book agent and we got close to getting a deal, but it never happened. And then I, I just put it aside and I started to write it as a movie and then the book came back around. So it's this long labyrinthine kind of process yeah. that, um, so the, the, the positive part of that is that, one, I was revising the whole all along the way. So when we actually submitted the proposal to publishers, it felt very complete to them. Now, it wasn't yeah. complete yeah. in that it didn't yeah. need editing, and, and um, I needed to add quite a bit. But it felt like, oh, they could tell this person knows how to write. She knows the story she's telling. And, you know, we sometimes need distance from the experience in order to be able to communicate it in a way that's, that's you know, that touches people. Mm -hmm. So I think that yeah. it really benefited from that time. Yeah, book proposals are fun, aren't they? 
Uh, <laughs> you think, wait, I did all this work. Shouldn't I just get paid for that? I didn't know. I, didn't, didn't I do it already? Isn't it done? Where's my good fat check? Because I know. I, <laughs> I know. I'm working on my second as we speak. I'm like, oh my God, this Are is you? harder than the book. This is harder than the book. Yeah, yeah. I know it. <laughs> But I agree oh, with you. Sometimes we do need some distance from it so we can put it in mm -hmm. perspective. So yes. let's let's talk about what the book's about. So you, you, you're very open and honest about your thoughts, which were funny, you know, of how you think of your family, um, which was making mm -hmm. me laugh. I'm really close family, too, and the way we are with each <laughs> other, you know, so it really resonated with me. And how were that time your dad passes away you guys are all devastated you're grieving you have you have you know amazing parents very you know mm -hmm. you talk about your family amazing family growing up how was it when your dad first visited you like share a little bit about what that was like well it was very powerful and very overwhelming and I'm sure i i was you know in a moment of really being grief stricken to the point where I, I wasn't sleeping at all. And it was, you know, many consecutive days of not sleeping, which really just has such a detrimental effect on your nervous system and on everything. And um, I just was so in such a dark place. And I, I just really, I fell to my knees one night in the middle of the night and just said, I need to sleep. Please help me. And I asked my dad to help me. I just said, please, I, I need sleep. And something happened in that moment where I just felt this presence tell me to just go to bed, just go to bed. Mm -hmm. And I mm -hmm. got up from the living room and I lay down in my bed and I felt a physical presence like a physical yeah. hand on me mm -hmm. laying me down to sleep and saying just mm -hmm. go to sleep and the next thing that I remember I was asleep and I woke up in this place that was uh I call it like a you know it's like a visiting hours in the afterlife mm -hmm. is what it felt like like I was floating in this boat and I look and my dad is with me and it's very peaceful and very quiet and I, all I can say, I, 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 I talk, describe it a lot in the book, but briefly I would say it's the sensation of feeling very, very pure in every sense of the word and in every single way. So any of my thoughts were directly transmitted to my dad and vice versa. And I could hear these thoughts and his, but, but, but our mouths weren't moving. And mm -hmm. I just asked him again, I said, I just told him that I felt very lost and I didn't know how to function. I didn't know if I could continue. And then I realized in, in that he was trying to reach out to me also, that he felt as though he was in this half place and, mm -hmm. and didn't, wasn't ready. You know, when he, when he was sick, he was not ready to go. Mm -hmm. He was not willing. He was in denial about it. He was very angry. Uh, it was it was really a terrible, terrible period of time and really particularly difficult for my mom and my sure. brother who were there for more of it. So it made sense to me, but the, the feeling was so overwhelming and it was this, um, there was no sense of time. I didn't feel like I, it's so difficult to explain. And then as soon as he tried to reach out to, to physically touch me, he couldn't. And then I tried and then I woke up abruptly and mm -hmm. I was in my bed and I was sweating and I screamed and I just felt, and it wasn't a scream of fear. It was just mm -hmm. a, all of this emotion that came out. And then I, fell back into this heavy, heavy sleep. And so the, that was the first time that I really felt him trying to reach out to me. And it, it kind of, you know, it at once overwhelmed me. But then I also felt like, oh, gosh, I just want to go back to that place. Mm -hmm. I just want to be there with him. And then, you know, the following period was uh, I started to wake up a bit. It was a very long process and, you know, slowly things started to, to, um, 
you know, I started to be able to function a little more, but that was really when I feel like I opened this portal Mm -hmm. that allowed me to be more in touch with everything and everyone. So even in my waking life, my life changed dramatically in terms of how I, how I felt and how I looked at things and how I connected to people and to what was happening around me. Um, Yeah. 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 I think, I mean, and I had a similar, my grandmother visited me after she passed away. We were very close and um, I was 16 at the time and she used to stay and when she would come to Florida from New Jersey and she'd sleep in the bed mm-hmm. with me and she would scratch my Aww. hair. She always had these long nails and she scratched my hair and she would hide smoking from my mom in the bathroom. And I, <laughs> she was always knocking stuff over and I heard her slippers and I heard her in the bathroom and I felt her scratch my head wow. and this was six, about six months after she passed away. So oh, I, wow. yeah, I know it was incredible and I remember it so vividly. And so when you were describing that place, you know it's a visitation and it's not just a dream because I do think there's a difference. I think sometimes we do dream about people that pass on and that's coming from our subconscious, but you know when you've been visited and it's really clear. Mm -hmm. It is a completely different feeling. It's Mm -hmm. like you're more lucid than when Mm -hmm. you're awake. It's so much, it's like crisp, but very soft. It's like a, it's Mm -hmm. kind of, it, it has like all of these opposites in one it feels and this very like pure deep experience that I you know that the first time was very um overwhelming like I said and then when the other subsequently I felt more and more uh open to it or at Mm -hmm. peace with it because I think initially I realized I was scared And I I looked at that and I went, oh, I think I'm scared also because if I really admit that this is happening, if I, Mm -hmm. if I let it in, then I I really have to accept that he is gone from this life, that he, that he has passed. And I didn't, once I realized that, I really just kind of, I mean, it was very emotional, but I also realized that I had been kind of putting up a little bit of a barrier because I I had been sort of trying to pretend like I wasn't feeling these sorts of things. And, you know, as you know, the feeling, I I Mm -hmm. talk about this in the book too. There was a time I was driving in my car yeah, and I was really having a tough time. And it was, I promise you, I thought I was going to look to my right and he was going to be sitting there. I, I, Mm -hmm. I felt him so clearly and so without doubt. And, um, you know, these kinds of messages are really, I, they're, they're, they're so hopeful and optimistic because I think that we, we have this, this feeling of, of death as being so final because the, mm-hmm. the absence of, of someone we love can feel so, so vast and just so insurmountable and in kind of understanding and that, that they don't, have, they don't ever leave us. They may live in the physical form here, mm-hmm. which has its own, you know, set of, of, of difficulties and challenges and, um, you know, things to grieve. They do go on in another form and, and they are still with us. Yeah. Did you always believe in um, signs and visitations? I mean, did you like go to psychics growing up? Because I've always kind of believed that stuff. When I was a teenager, I used to go to psychics, get my you cards did, even read. You were a teenager? Yeah, did you, I've were always your, Were your parents been. into it or no? Well, How my did parents you discover that. My, I, my parents weren't into it. No, just friends. Like we would go to those mystical bookshops. Mm-hmm. Like I've always been drawn to that. I've, yes. I've, I'm Catholic. Well, not my Me parents too. are Catholic. We're Italian, yep. but we never were practicing. So it was sort of like my right. parents are really open about me and my sister discovering what works for us like you know they're just mm-hmm. they're fine with it so I was just always attracted to it so I always loved it did you or yes so this, I did mm-hmm. my grandmother who I was born on her birthday mm-hmm. and I share her name was Adeline and that's my middle name uh, I was oh, named funny. after her she she but I don't think that I knew that I guess I did know this probably as a child she would go to see psychics all the time Mm-hmm. And 
she would tell my mom about it. And, but my mom never, never engaged in any of that. And so I would, I remember she had tarot cards that I, when she passed away, when I was maybe 11 or 12, those are the things I wanted. I wanted her tarot cards, you know, <laughs> yeah. on jewelry or anything. <laughs> right. I wanted her tarot cards. <laughs> yeah. Um, I so, understand that. I, I really started seeing uh, psychics and things or becoming really actively curious about it, probably in high school, I would say. And yeah. then um, I definitely... I'm a person who has seen psychics for years and yeah, you know, there, there are a couple in particular, one in particular that I speak with a couple of times a year. And, uh, I talk about her in the book too. And, you know, it's really a gift mm-hmm. when you see that these people who have that kind of, mm-hmm. um, ability, it, it's, yeah. it's really a, a gift that, and it they is. certainly see it that way. Definitely is. And I have a very good friend who in the last five years has opened herself up to all of this. And she Mm. is like amazing. Once she said yes, like now, like, you know, she's so psychically connected and all now she's, she channels and it's like, it's crazy. And spirits come to her. Yeah. It's, and she, yeah, it's just amazing. So I've always been attracted to that. And I think like you said in the book, there's like, you said, the line, the film is really thin mm. between, yes. you know, the living and the, you know, the the physical and the non-physical world, let's say, physical and non-physical. Yes. And I do think that more and more people are waking up. I, I do see I do it. Too. I mean, I here we too. are talking openly about it. And um, exactly. I want, <laughs> yes. right, on the radio, which is going to go across social yes. media, people can listen all over the world. You know, like right. nobody would do that 25 years ago. It would be like hush, yeah. hush, you know? Even in less, you know, when I think about when I, we first, I was first trying to get this book published, mm-hmm. um, I didn't at that time, I, I did not make the dreams a big part of the book. Because I felt as though people were not ready for that, which they were. I was going to ask you about that. So before, let's dive mm -hmm. into that a little bit. Um, But right now we're at the next break time. So let's take our break right here and then we'll come back and talk more about that. Okay. Interesting. The Real Conscious Connection. Ohm Times Radio. IOM FM. Ohm Times Magazine is one of the leading online content providers of positivity, wellness, and personal empowerment, a philanthropic organization. Their net proceeds are funneled to support worldwide charity initiatives via Humanity Healing International. Through their commitment to creating community and providing conscious content, they aspire to uplift humanity on a global scale. Ohm Times, co-creating a more conscious lifestyle. Imagine yourself being transported to India, to the banks of the Ganga, and an ashram in Rishikesh. Visualize that you are welcome to satsang with an American sannyasi who shares the wisdom of her guru. Your visualization has manifested. Join Satvi Bhagawati Saraswati for inspiration and transformation every Thursday at 11 a.m. Eastern on Om Times Radio. Hi, I'm Melissa Caprio from Postcards to the Universe, creating the life you crave. Do you believe in magic? What if I told you all you had to do was get a little creative and work a dream spell to bring anything you can imagine into your life? Well, guess what? I've got the spell for you. Postcards to the Universe, a global movement for manifestation, is a casting magical tool for you to use whenever you want. How does living in passion sound to you? Join me in my movement where you get to create in the magical playground. Let's think outside the box and do some playful conjuring. By casting out our desires with a manifesting postcard, we explore our hearts and allow the alchemy of our dreams to appear. And don't forget to tune in each week here on Ohm Times Radio with my show, Postcards to the Universe, Creating the Life You Crave at 4 p.m. Eastern Time. I share tips on creativity, abundance, and prosperity, and you will be introduced to the coolest guests, trailblazers, mystics, and creatives who enrich our lives. Coping 19, brought to you by CDC and the Ad Council. If you're feeling increasingly lonely right now, you're not alone. It's totally normal. 
Even though we may not be able to get together in person, connecting virtually with friends and family still gives you a chance to interact with people and may help raise your spirits. Join a virtual book club, set up group text chats, or online video coffee breaks with coworkers. Find more self-care and coping tips at coping-19.org. Welcome back. I'm here with actress and author, Elisa Donovan. So we were talking before the break about um, how the world is shifting and where people are so much more open to, you know, mm-hmm. somebody like you as an actress who's writing a book, not about growing up as an actress, but right. <laughs> her, her father is dead <laughs> visiting her, right? Yeah. You know, <laughs> so, so how, I know it's crazy. How was the publishing world um, open to a book like this coming from you as an actress? Well, Initially, when I we first uh, was first pitched, and I had a a, a different book agent altogether, mm-hmm. and this mm-hmm. is going back years now. Um, I want to say 2010, maybe. Okay. The 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 feeling was first of all, no one understood what kind of book I was writing. So mm-hmm. at first, they thought, well, what? She's writing a book about being in Clueless and on Sabrina, the teenage <laughs> rich, and I said, right. no. I don't want to read that book. Like, who wants to read that book? You know, somebody way more famous than me is going to write that book. And I said, no, I, I, we had to keep reiterating that, mm-hmm. no, she doesn't have a ghostwriter. She's written this mm-hmm. herself. This is not a vanity book. And they just couldn't wrap their heads around it. And, you know, the the ones that did read it, which we got close to getting a, a deal, they, they mm-hmm. felt like they had one other book that was similar so they couldn't Mm -hmm. have another and Mm -hmm. I didn't put a lot of the dreams in it because they weren't it it wasn't what people really wanted to hear and so I kept saying but it's also a funny book and a spiritual book Mm -hmm. and the word spirituality at that time was not as in the you know collective unconscious as it is now and it just didn't work and this time around, you know, it was not only was it met with more open arms, mm-hmm. um, the, my editor said to one of the first things she said to me before we even, you know, signed the deal was that mm-hmm. she said, these are the things that we want to hear more about. That is mm-hmm. what, like, I actually want you to go deeper into these things and put in more dreams that you are having. Mm-hmm. And I went, it was like someone telling me I won the lottery. I felt like, oh, I can write about <laughs> write more about that stuff. Right. Just wait, you know. I'm like, I could mm-hmm. fill volumes with that. Yeah. So I think we are shifting. You know, it's a slow shift, but I feel it. Yeah, I do too. I do too. And I'm. You, your mom is a trip, man. She, she <laughs> I love your mom the way you write your mom, man. She really yeah, is cool. Like, but she reminds me character. a little. Of, she, she reminds me of my mom a little bit. My mom has that similar energy. And I just, it was so cool how your mom would get calls, you, would call you and get so excited because your dad was leaving her. Because did your mom lose a lot of stuff or something because your dad was bringing <laughs> back her jewelry? <laughs> yes. And so she, prior to all of this, she was not really, I mean, I think she was, um, She'd listen if I would tell her something about a psychic or something otherworldly that could happen, but she was not really on board. So the fact that this became, you know, she just jumped on this train and was Mm -hmm. ecstatic about it. Uh, And, you know, it was really, she also, I don't, I don't, I I didn't put this in the book, but there was a one time when I went home to visit her and (laughs) she said, she had this a wire coat hanger and she mm-hmm. said someone told us that if you hold you you hold the the have you heard of this a wire hanger in your hand and it moves towards where the spirits dousing. are in the house she was dousing the west spirits <laughs> Maybe is that what it is? And I, and I just, well, I they do dousing with water and like certain things. So your it sounds like your mom was dousing for your dad. <laughs> yes, I think she. So then, and, and another, you know, throughout this mm-hmm. period, um, my my mom doesn't no longer lives in the on the farm that we that mm-hmm. I write about in the book where she was living. 
but at the time when she was still living there, my other grandmother on my father's side, when she would come to visit, she passed away after my dad. Um, but when she used to come to visit that house, she would always sleep in the office area, which was off of the living room. That was her, it was the warmest room. So she would rather like sleep on the pull out couch in there than sleep in a bedroom because it was really warm in there. So I came to visit and I opened my, um, I opened the front door and they picked me up at the airport and I was going in the front door and I saw uh, someone walk from the, the, um, living room into the office and I just thought it was my brother like I was carrying a suitcase and I just looked quickly and I thought oh it was my brother how do you get back there so quick you know and I said oh I'm not staying in there I'm gonna stay in the guest room and I turned around and my brother was outside you know and I said oh my god that was my grandmother and then I realized yeah I saw this woman in her robe in this blue robe that she would always wear it's like a pea almost a peacock colored robe and, you know, that that very yeah. slow movement, like super mm-hmm. steady and slow, it's almost, you know, it, it's it's sometimes humorous because you think, oh, this is why they make it look like this in movies. Because that's, right. sort of <laughs> that's what it looks like. Yes. Yeah. And <laughs> you know? I think it's cool it's that you're boring. open, <laughs> you're your family is so open to it all. So I do think that when you you are more open, you get more of that because my whole family is like that. Yeah. My mom is like that. My mom saw her grandmother when I was a baby mm. leaning over my crib. My grandmother knew her favorite cousin passed away after she got out of surgery. He visited her, you know, so there's like oh, these things that yeah. happen. And when you're open, you're an open channel to it. It's, it's really mm-hmm. cool. And um, you shared... You shared your last, if you want to just touch on it, um, the last visitation, or is this the last visitation? In the book, you say it's the last visitation with your dad. It, it is. I, the, so I've had, um, I haven't had any other visitation. Mm-hmm. I think that was the last visitation dream okay. with him. Mm-hmm. But I have had him visit Give me in signs. life, in yeah. my waking yeah. life. Oh, yes, 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 yeah, yes. Yeah, I get signs all but, the time. Yeah, that's cool. Um, all the time, especially in doing the press for this book, you know, uh-huh. doing it in the oh, pandemic. Sure. So much so much <laughs> of it has been from home. Mm-hmm. And we had recently moved. We moved in May, and I really started to do the bulk of the press uh, in, in mm-hmm. the middle, end of May and June. And I set up my desk in one part of that house and right outside the window is this big, beautiful tree. Mm-hmm. And the second that I sat down to do the first interview, I'm always, I always think of a uh, hummingbird as mm-hmm. my dad, like that's kind of who comes mm-hmm. to visit me. And I sit down, I turn on my lights and I look over, oops, there's a hummingbird out of <laughs> right. nowhere. And right. every time I do interviews, the hummingbird is there. And then once oh. I, I mentioned in an interview how, Oh, you know, my dad always comes to me and I'm like, I'm sure he's going to be right there. And of course, the one time I mentioned it, no, he wasn't there, you know? And I said, Oh, he'll be, he'll be around in a second. And I just pictured him like laughing, you know, right, going like, oh, you, don't take me for granted. I'm not going to die, you know? <laughs> So, so that's so one of your signs. So time. hummingbirds are yeah. your dad. Okay. Hummingbirds. Yeah. And music, you know, I get a lot mm-hmm. of things with music that yeah. he loved uh, classical music and also a mm-hmm. lot of jazz. And so like Louis Armstrong and Ray Charles and, you know, those mm-hmm. kinds of songs will come on in very unusual environments. You know, yes. I'll be yes. in like a, a super cool hip you know, Hollywood place. And I, this has happened to me and I had a meeting and I was suddenly very nervous about meeting this Mm. actor to be, to be in the the film. And I started to feel nervous and insecure and like, what am I like? He's not going to, I will, I will this very well-known person want to be in my little movie. (laughs) And it went from like Lady Gaga to Ray Charles (laughs) just out of nowhere. And I was like, okay, all right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I just think, okay, I'm all right. I love that. I'm all right. I love that. <laughs> I get that too. I The song Stevie Wonders, I just called to say I love you. That's out. That's great. That's my mom. We call her my mom. My oh. mom. That's my mom. Mm-hmm. Oh, I yeah. love that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, she loved the song. She loved the song. And anytime, like if there's, oh, it's, it always comes at an, a time that's an, a time that you wouldn't normally hear the song, you know? So that's yeah. how I always know it's like a validation. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. Well, I loved yep. when you described, which I thought, what an experience 
experience that you, your dad, when he came to you in this last visitation mm -hmm. dream, yeah, he still really showed, he still looked sick and he showed you mm -hmm. his last days on earth. Yep. That gives yep. me goosebumps. Because I just got goosebumps again when I, when I say it is, to you. This is how powerful that was and how much I knew that this is, again, not mm -hmm. a typical unconscious sleeping dream. Right. Because as I had mentioned before, that the last week really of his life was quite brutal for everyone. Mm -hmm. And sure. uh, it was just bad. And um, so you know, he didn't want to go and it was just awful. And so in this final dream, he really transformed from it looked like him. And then he turned into his 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 ill facade mm. like what he looked like when he was really really at the end of his life mm. and everything flashed before me from from my whole childhood and then wow. like all of the moments in this um quick 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 flashes and mm. then i saw his last days and how how mean he was and how mm. and what in pain how much pain sure. he was in and how sad we were. And it's like he was showing me that he knows that he did that and that now he is, he's accepting that he's moved on. Mm -hmm. And it was like this. And then he looked back at me. And all I can say is that it was this, this understanding and this knowingness between the two of us where he was saying, mm -hmm. I see you. I see everything mm -hmm. that you are. I see who 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 you are and what you are and I love you and and everything is everything is okay and wow. I knew that he was saying that he was saying his goodbye mm -hmm. in that in that you know that in that phase of his crossing over or that place he was in he 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 was truly saying goodbye and 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 it was it was incredibly powerful and very different from the very first dream like that that I had with him. It was incredibly peaceful. Yeah, in the what end. a gift! What a gift! Oh, and when I woke up, I was I was literally smiling, and I woke mm -hmm. up in this peaceful state right from that dream. And yeah. I was very emotional, but I felt it was beautiful. I felt so much peace, and um, yeah, it, it was That's really nice. something. It sounds like it. So I saw in your bio that you're, this is, it's, it's going to be made into a movie for sure. Yes. Something like it's going to so happen. Congratulations. Thank you. Okay. Well, it's in development right now and we have okay. some great, we have great producers and a great couple of actors attached and we are trying to secure the financing with a small movie. It's a sure. labor of love and those things mm -hmm. take time. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that, you know, everyone who has jumped on board thus far has done so because they love the material so much. And, yeah. you know, that also shows me how people, you know, people do want to, to, to tell meaningful stories and, and yeah. things that, that resonate and that are hopeful, you know. We need more it's, movies it's like that. There's only, yes, so many, because, there's, there's only so many superhero yes. movies they can make over and over again, for real. <laughs> Thank you. It's so true, you know? Mm -hmm. And there's, you know, I think that it is possible. Life is full of all of these shades and colors and, and feelings. There is sadness. There is great joy. There is pain. There is pleasure, you know? And being, trying to avoid any of those pieces is, is really doing uh, yourself a, a, a disservice because it's yeah. all a part of the human experience. And, you know, all that I went through in that time period was so challenging and yet it has enhanced my life to a degree that I can't even articulate how, how mm -hmm. much fuller my life is today. And I truly think it is because I of of walking through all that I did. Yeah, and don't. I just that's the message that I really want to share to people that, mm -hmm. you know, we can we can come through these things to the other side and have a full and happy life. Mm. Yes. Are, did you write the, are you writing the screenplay also? 
Yes, I did. I wrote the screenplay. Good for you, girl. Love it. I yes. love it. And so <laughs> we, we only have like a minute left. Um, so do you have any book signings coming up in person anywhere? If anybody's listening where you're doing a, a so, book signing? Yes, I'm doing okay. one in Los Angeles. I'm in LA right now to do mm -hmm. one tomorrow night. That is the okay. 26th at 7 p.m. at the Barnes & Noble at the Grove in LA. Mm -hmm. And if you I know that go to any of my... Noble social media you will um my social media awesome. it'll be up there and i'm hopeful that we can i did a kind of surprise pop-up one in new york yesterday um and but we're hoping to do more in-person things to schedule them mm -hmm. it's been a little tricky with yeah. covid mm -hmm. but i think in the fall there will hopefully be um you know some more on the east coast that we'll do and more in other parts of california and seattle and um you know anywhere that we can schedule them but it's we we have to kind of see what happens with covid awesome well thank you so much alisa it's been such thank a pleasure you. having you and i love your story and i'm glad you wrote it it's just like so my kind of book and for my peeps who are in the la area who listen if you want to go to a book signing it's tomorrow at 7 p.m pacific correct mm -hmm. tomorrow it, barnes yes, and noble at the right. grove in la <laughs> awesome. Yeah. awesome and the audio book comes out september 7th Oh, perfect. I love audio. So guys, please check out Elisa Donovan's new book, Wake Me When You Leave. And it's just such a pleasure having you, Elisa. Thank you. Thank you for Thank listening. Thank you so much, Melissa. Hi, you're welcome. Thank you for listening to Postcards to the Universe with Melissa, creating the life you crave. And I'm wishing everyone a wonderful week filled with joy, abundance, and love. Peace.